Okay, thank you. Thanks for the introduction, Peter. Um, so you already know about this, so let's get straight to the point. Um, today I'm going to talk about pandas, uh, but we're already only talking about pandas indexing in particular. And uh, the pandas index is a very powerful tool, and I think it's very often skipped in beginner's tutorial to even mention the, oh, thank you, to mention the index, and this is more like um, a closer look at the index. Um, so we're going to do a little catch up on indexing, uh, how we can access data with the index, index types, multi-indexes, and a closer look at the daytime index. So the very beginning is just like a little rep repetition to get everybody on the um, same page. So um, Pandas is basically built on um, series. Um, so this is just like a simple example of a series. So we just take some random integers and make uh, some, and. Uh, create a data uh, pandas uh, series, and basically it's like a list um, or an array uh, with numbers. But one thing you see here, we already have this, and this is called the index, and it's just like a labeling. So basically you can say it's not only like a data or a data list in, uh, in, in Python, it's, it's, it's already labeled. Um, so it's a NumPy array actually here, which we can see at the data type. Um, it's a NumPy array with labels, but I think most of you should know that. So um, how can we access um, data in a series? And basically it's like a very Pythonic concept. We can just, it's called slicing, so we can just uh, uh, access it by uh, the positional index, just like as we, as we would do with a list. Uh, we can do slicing, just as we would do in a list with Python. And, and we can also um, use the methods for this. That's, uh, one is the, the method is called iloc. And, but note it's not um, brackets yet, square brackets uh, to slice stuff, and we see that. Yeah, so this is just like a little long warm up. But as I mentioned, we already have labels in our index, even in a series, in our series. So um, here we can also just go and uh, relabel it. So what we're doing here is actually. Um, we are setting uh, the index, which is just like series.index as a method, and we just uh, take the alphabet like uh, and, and, and relabel it. Um, so now we have exchanged our um, numerical uh, zero index series with like just like letters, and we can still access by the position, like with the position, which is like the Pythonic way in a list. Um, but now we can even like slice it by labels. Um, and we even, yeah, we like label D to F, so panels will just look here, D and to F, and give the result back. And now already the little for beginners for confusing part ends, but I guess you probably already rented. Um, can we slice by multiple? No, we can't. It's in Valic syntax. Um, can we, um, and how could we solve it? Basically, there's also not another method called uh, concat, so we can just like slice two series and reconcat it again, and we have our new series. So, and one more thing of pandas indexes is um, usually, you, or you might uh, probably think an index to be unique, and pandas indexes are not unique, as we can see here. Um, so here we are relabeling our series again, and I just took the word Gattaca XYZ here to relabel our series, so we have Gattaca XYZ, and can we use the lock method to ask for uh, what's with G? Yes, we can. Uh, can we still slice it? Um, in a way we said, hey, let's give G to A, and no, we can't, because uh, Pandas is only able to use if we basically have here like um, something unique, a subsequent series of unique values, as we can see here, um, if you use the, math, the lock method for x to z, it works, because x, y, z are unique in pandas. So it's really nice and powerful, but that's something you should be, must be really aware of when working um, with a panda series. So, um, now we know how to access uh, data in a simple pandas index, so everybody's on the same page. So what about 
two-dimensional or three-dimensional data. Um, so let's have a deeper look in the index structure. So um, the, as we learned, like the label of a series is usually called the index. Um, it's cr automatically created, if not given, by the data set you're importing or however you create your data or add your data to pandas. It can be reset or replaced, as I already demonstrated. It's fairly simple to replace and reset your index. There's also like a reset method which will do all the lifting for you, so you don't have to give an explicit um, index. It, can, it may only like contain hashable objects, which is like quite obvious that you cannot put a set or a dict there to um, layer to um, uh, basically label stuff. And um, yeah, and it can have one or more dimensions, even even the index already. And beware, it's not unique. Yeah, it usually I usually work with unique, but you can also do some fancy stuff with non-unique indexes, which we're not going to cover today. So um, we have multiple index types. So we just have index, which we just saw, is basically just like labeling uh, labels of a series. We have a multi-index, which I'm going to demonstrate later. We have a date-time index, which is actually my favorite, um, and we're going to talk about it a lot. Um, we also have a time delta index, an interval index, and most recently, in the latest pandas version, the categorical index has been added, which can be also very useful. So. What's the structure behind all this? The, the basic, all the ideas with data series and data frame is actually borrowed from the R language, which is like the language of statisticians. So um, the structure is we have some data. In case, um, just like a reminder, of course, like the data is, except for strings, it's, uh, it's uh, NumPy um, under the hood. So we have NumPy data types. Um, and it's actually so that the, the series are also um, uh, uh, typed. So it's not like in Python, we have an array of multiple types. It's, it's, it's uh, strictly typed. So that's why the, the, where also the performance coming from. And a series is called a NumPy array with labels. So, and what's the data frame? Uh, it's basically uh, multiple uh, series basically, basically glued together by the, having the same index. So, uh, so note we have multiple series, but we have also like these labels there. And there's also a three-dimensional structure. It's called panel. But I just want to tell, tell you about it because to tell you, you can actually feel bad about it because it has just been deprecated. Um, because uh, basically you can achieve the same uh, with uh, multi um, indexes. So um, it was removed um, for simplification. So data frame, basically it's like two dimensional data, which is um, fairly simple actually to imagine. Um, so let's create a new set here. So it's just like a set of random integers. We see um, our index, auto -created, automatically created indexes back again. Um, the same applies for uh, color names. So from the names so for each and every series is also referred to as a column. And um, this is also referred to as a row. Uh, so it's, um, So, how can we access data in a data frame? So, I think this is uh, now if we ask for a positional index, we do not longer get the, we don't get the row values. We get the column now because the data frame is first indexed by columns. So, we get the series out. Of course, we can do the same for slicing, but this is, I think, a logical break in the whole Pandas API, which is very confusing, because if you slice, we get rows, which I think is a break, but once you get used to it, it's still handy. Um, and, and we can also use the iLog method, for example, to even slice just like a part of, out of our data frame. So um, this is like uh, the zero axis, and uh, um, one x axis one. Um, so we can just like uh, use uh, the alloc method to slice out a segment out of our data frame, which is really handy if we have bigger data frames. So let's continue our adventure here. And what if you want to slice two columns? I think it's fairly simple. Um, we just use like uh, we just pass in like uh, 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 two dots to uh, say okay. Um, 
as in Python, take the whole array uh, and can also just ask for the column. And sometimes um, it's a little bit confusing, all this access stuff. And I really had a hard time to remember when I was new to Pandas. And um, actually, I stumbled across a, a nice, uh, what we call Eselsbrücke in German, which is just like something to help you to remind stuff. So access zero is horizontal, and um, access one is vertical. And it's fairly easy to remember because one it looks just like a one. So this is just like, this is how I basically remembered it. Because I'm also one of these guys, like always like, oh, left, right, right, left, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and so, okay. Here, so um, let's go further. Um, I really have a trouble little reading here. Um, let, me, let me reconfigure my set a bit, sorry. So, okay, um, let's relabel um, our index and the columns, and it's fairly simple as demonstrated before. We can, uh, here I'm just passing in uh, a method, a function, just like uh, to rename our rows and uh, columns, just like by R starting with a leading zero, so, um, so we can, uh, uh, it's a little bit more memorable than just working with numbers. And of course we can still now access the rows, just like as before, if we pass ask for row uh, C05, we get fifth column, well, basically the sixth one. Um, the same, of course, applies for um, accessing the rows and the same for accessing the segments. So this is just like the same logic as applied before, just by positional values. And how can we now add data to pandas? Um, basically because we sometimes have uh, data, or often have data from multiple sources, and how can actually pandas help us gluing together um, the sort of data from multiple sources. And actually here the index becomes really handy, because for example, if we add here, uh, we're doing just like, uh, we're just, I'm just adding a new series, um, uh, it's uh, called C10, and, um, Peter, can you show me the rest side? I lost my timer. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, what do we have here? I create a new series, and you see, like, the labeling is a little bit off, and um, we just like uh, add it to uh, our data frame, which is already in place. So I just we just say, okay, data frame, please add a new uh, column called C10, and we pass in the data frame or the series we um, uh, created here. Um, and you see, we end up with like NAND values here. Um, and, uh, and we also miss labels because the index just does not match. So this, is, this can be really handy for like uh, joining multiple uh, data frames, for example, uh, because we can also be like be a little bit more like explicit about how we want to join the data. Um, because here, we just do the same and we just say how to join uh, this is like the same logic as, as from uh, SQL databases. So we just ask, ask, we ask for a join, and then we only get the subset, basically where both indexes match. And basically the rest is just like dropped out of our data frame. Um, and of course, if you apply something like that, Pandas always returns a copy of the data. So basically, um, if you want to keep this structure, you have to store it in a new variable or just like overwrite the variable you're working with. It's sometimes forgotten. Um, what else can we do? Um, of course, we also can do an auto joins. And uh, here um, I'm using uh, a, another really handy method which is called in place true because in place just instructs apply the changes to the data frame we're currently working on. And so, um, for an outer join, basically we just say, hey, join everything. Um, we receive everything, and everything where we have no values, Pandas automatically adds NAND values. Um, 
And um, there's another really handy thing. We can also just like um, instruct to say to ignore errors uh, if we want to join and something throws an exception. So uh, it was like this nice example here. So um, how do we get rid of data? So we can use the drop method. Um, Basically, I'm, I want to get rid of this column, and of course, we could just like slice a column, but what if you just like want the third column, the fifth, the tenth, the twentieth column? Um, you can, could be just like ask explicitly and to basically join the data later, but it's, uh, uh, the drop method is much more handy. So I just want to get rid of the newly created column 10, so I, we ask pandas just like drop this, but if we don't put ignore there, it will throw an error um, and because it might not be present. So um, the ignoring errors can be really handy if you are not sure whether there's a column in your um, data set present. Um, so um, let's go to the multi-index. Um, the multi-index is basically also like a fairly simple data structure I want to introduce you to or index structure. Um, so now we have a little different data set. And uh, so basically this is just like, um, we just have some, uh, we just create, it's like, we could imagine it's like hotel prices. Um, so we have a city, um, there's a price, there's a certain rating, and uh, it's the city is located in the, some country. So this is just like a fairly easy data set. And, um, and actually, uh, so we have some major cities here and my hometown Mannheim as well. I was take, uh, free to add that. And now let's see what we can do with that. Well, we group. Because many people are not aware if you do a group by in, uh, in Pandas, you actually get back a multi-index. And for example, so this is like the a group by, and we ask for the mean, and pandas will just go, as you probably know already, uh, take all the, uh, the data types where you can actually make a mean off. And so we see these are just like uh, the rating. And we already see like a hierarchical structure here. So um, we ask to group by uh, country, city, and category, and we pass this in as a list, and uh, pandas will just create this data hierarchical data structure um, in the same order, we do the grouping by, um, so we have the country, um, the city, and then um, the category, um, and our the mean values we were looking for. And this looks really nicely, but it might be a little bit confusing. How can I access, basically, for example, if I'm interested in getting the data from the cities? Um, so, of course, you could ask for these values and basically walk down the path of the uh, hierarchical index, but um, we can actually access it basically a little bit better. So let's have a closer look on the index, well, which actually it's really easy to look into the index and pandas just by asking by dot index. So what do we have here? We have VC, we have a multi um, index, and it also indicates we have levels. So we have like three lists, which are all basically Thank you. Um, Concatenate the levels, and we can also ask for the index level. So it's really easy to look into the data by level, and we also can ask just like for um, the names back again. So in standard panels, is very explicit what's stored, and we can also ask for the index values. And here you see how the multi index actually works, because actually it's just like tuples. Um, it's just like tuples of the city, uh, the, sorry, country, city, and the category uh, we are we're looking for, and this is fairly simple, and actually it's a very simple um, structure we can work in our minds to get to the data. So, and we also can directly access um, the, the data by just asking for um, the, the values by level. So here we are just asking to give us back all the data, uh, all the values we have on level two. And uh, all the same applies for level one. So I think, I think this is fairly simple. Um, this is just like two more examples. Um, we can, because we can also um, just like use the locks uh, method um, to ask for all the data which is stored on the first level here, uh, country. So here I'm just asking, hey, please give me back all uh, the data which are 
in the country for for Germany, and we even can just like access the, the hierarchical engines just also like by passing in a list through. And basically, pandas will just go and match the the, the list we pass into the tubules it has stored in the multi-index, and so it is fairly simple, basically to access the data you want. Um, yeah. So. Um, I really want to take, spend some time talking about my favorite index, which is the daytime index, because there's a lot of data, basically almost all data has some timestamp on it. And let me introduce you a data set for this little exercise. It's a fairly simple data set. It's just like um, a timestamp and a temperature value, which is taken from an open data set from the city of Aarhus. And this is how the data looks like. Um, this is when we just plot the data as it comes in. And let's create our data frame, uh, the tight time index, which is fairly simple. We can just use the uh, to date time method, which is built in, in pandas, and it's actually there to uh, pass date time um, values. Um, it does most of the heavy lifting for you, but you can also be very explicit how your date time, uh, uh, like the date time string, uh, is structured. Um, so we just rely on this format here. This is like the default format. And yeah, now we have an index. And what are our discoveries once we have created the index? If we just like do the same plot again, and we say, oh wow. Um, this is, uh, this is like really well going up and down, really fairly random. And now we see, okay, this is, looks more like a time stream of um, temperature values across multiple days. And you see like that's one of the great things about pandas that everything works really well together. So we don't need to instruct anything in matplotlib here to how we want to present our data in which order. Like once we have um, a daytime index, Hannes does the levy lifting for us in matplotlib. So, what else can we do? Um, we can, uh, yeah, this is just like a closer look on the daytime index. So you see actually timestamps here. Um, uh, you can also notice, uh, so we have a, a daytime, it's a timestamp, that's the name of the, the index. Uh, this is the, the value count, the length, and we saw also the daytime index also supports frequencies, which we're not going to cover today, but um, it's also like fairly, fairly neat to work with frequencies in pandas. So let's group by the, just like take the data from we have with we have in the index, which is like timestamps, and um, use the index for grouping the data. And just like, let's count. And if you already see here, we, I'm just not asking for the index as such, which is just like uh, on the um, second granularity. We I just add just like, oh, index date. And it's already built in. So we can easily group, use the daytime index to group data by days without doing anything. And we can also use something as well. There's also like the week. And we can just like basically chain the methods here and say the mean and plot it. Thank you. And we can also use um, the index to ask for what are like weekdays or and what is weekends. Um, this is also a little logical break, uh, in my opinion, in pandas. For example, if you uh, if we pass daytime objects, it's very friendly to U.S. states. And as you, of course, know, um, the U.S. is the only country with month, day, year, which can be really troublesome. Um, uh, but for example, for here, pandas is um, zero indexed, but zero is Monday. But so in the U.S., it should be like Sunday. So this is like the Europe, more European uh, way to um, uh, count uh, weekdays. So what are we doing here? We are just like um, getting data from the index and then we just use um, the boole Boolean index, just ask okay for uh, which days five and six and um, so we get the weekends back and then we just like glue everything together and just like ask for the hour of the data we have basically uh, combined here. And so we can actually find in our data set that the temperature at least at weekends is higher, which I think is a good sign if you live in Denmark. Um, so these are probably sunnier weekends, but it's a small data set, it has no significance. What else can we do? We can also just like ask for um, a date 
and we can just pass in like um, a whole month here um, as a string. So this is just like a year and month, and get the temperature plotted. Uh, so it's a very, very powerful index. So it, ha it, it, it really saves you a lot of time, like making up your mind, okay, what do I want to pull, put lambda functions, or like anything, anything. Uh, once you have a daytime index, basically, daytime is at your fingertips. Um, so what else? Um, we can also ask for ranges, just like uh, with slicing by dates, which is also, I think, pretty neat and very useful. And this is probably not as useful, but um, just like to show you a little bit. We can also like just ask for the hour of the index and just ask for, um, we can um, basically make a, like uh, ask for, this is like an end statement. So we ask for all the data in our data frame where the hour was greater than like 12 o'clock, and but uh, it was uh, just like until like 16, 1600 hours. So, um, and then we just can plot it. I don't know whether it's any use for it, but I think it's good. And of course, once you have um, the data uh, with the daytime index, you can also do resampling, which is like super cool. Um, so let's do resample a little bit. So here's our data set. Um, we just pass in read the resample method and pass in D. Um, D is basically resampled by day. And then we can uh, aggregate data or like ask, okay, what's the maximum? And we immediately get back the maximum um, values back for each and every day, but re in a resample fashion. So, um, and we can use, uh, you will do the same and uh, just ask by uh, month, which is M, which is quite accessible. You can also resample the your, our data frame by day and uh, ask for uh, an aggregate, which is also like a really, ag function is also really handy because we can ask for minimum and a maximum and just like plot it. So this is like the minimum, maximum values for each and every day. And the last and most useful thing for resampling I want to show you is actually we can even resample by three days. So basically you are very flexible on the, the intervals you can sample. So if you want to have like three days, one day, something, 12 hours, 11 hours, anything. This is super flexible. I thought it was a little bit hard to find actually um, what is what. So uh, let me present you this slide with all how you can resample. So I, I've taken the freedom, the ones I've found most useful to put them on the left side. Uh, but Pandas actually was developed at the hedge front where Wes McKinley was working as a, at a hedge front when he was starting to use Pandas. So you have a lot of like business um, time frames there as well. And um, so basically you can resample by anything you probably can think of. And um, yeah, that's uh, the end of my little presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. So thank you, Alexander. I think we have one uh, quick question. Otherwise, um, okay. Just a question, this, this timestamp is limited to, to NumPy daytime uh, type with based on nanoseconds. Do you have any idea if you can use a different frame? Because I, I would like to have spend a, a bigger time. I don't care about a nanosecond. Second would be totally fine. Do you have any idea of this possible? No, actually, actually, I was really happy with the daytime sono. Um, no, I have never stumbled across it. But let me know if you find something. Okay, thanks again.